If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at shiresociety.com. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, Don McBride, representing National Award 5. I brought this bill forward for a couple of reasons. Over the years, I have had people walk up to me, put a camera in my face, and I'm only going to tell stories that apply to me. I have, there are many other stories. But I've had people come up and, and put a camera in my face and, and a microphone and start asking questions. And when I would ask them who they are and who they represent, they would not tell me. In fact, one got uh, very adamant with me, and uh, I had to get adamant back. Uh, I won't tell you what I said or what he said, but uh, nevertheless, he refused to identify himself. So it occurred to me that uh, since our staff members wear tan badges, we wear badges, we're not mandated to, but we do, we need to know who each other is. Uh, I felt that the uh, people representing the press should also wear a badge. Uh, I thought it was common sense. So that was the reason I brought the uh, bill forward. And that is my testimony. <laughs> As it shall be. Are there questions from members of the committee? Well, I, I guess... Uh, we're, we're the back. Uh, Don, when you say the press corps, a lot of people come in with just cameras, you know, and video recorders that aren't technically members of the press. Correct. They're not lobbyists. Correct. Would those have to be included? And they're just citizens that are just taping our proceedings as they have a right to do? Would those have to? I, I'm, I'm just trying to clarify, yeah. you know. Press people that I'm talking about are required to be registered here. There's no reason that also with that registration they don't have a name badge. So that's, that's the premise of what I'm okay. trying to But it was just, just the press itself, not yes. an individual citizen coming in and taking a recording. Correct. Okay. The individual I'm talking about uh, introduced himself as a member of the press. Okay. Uh, but then when I asked him what his name was and who he worked for, he refused to tell me. I just, I just wanted to make yes. clarification. Yeah. <coughs> um, Representative Weber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for taking my question. This is a question that may be better addressed to one of the two House clerks who are in the room but have left. But uh, <laughs> do you know how the press registration works, what the procedure is for that? And I, if that's not something you know, I'll hold that and, and we'll make I, it. I do know. I just know that they have to register. Thank you. Further questions? Okay, thank you for your testimony. Thank you very much. Uh, no, we, need, we need a card. We need a card. Yeah. yeah. Um, the chair <laughs> recognizes uh, Daryl Perry once again. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay. Again, Daryl Perry, CEO of the Free Lobby LLC. Uh, so I was searching through the RSAs trying to find out exactly what is the press corps. I found only one other reference in RSA 20 colon 5 where it refers to members of the press corps regularly covering the proceedings of the general court and that's in regards to who winds up getting a copy of the manual for each legislative session. HB 110 removes the word regularly so it could be construed to these two guys that are here with video cameras. Uh, I know at least the guy on the left is a member of the media. And further, I've never heard of any media registration for members of the media coming to the legislature. The only media registration I'm aware of is in regards to covering court proceedings, and then it allows you to bypass the filing of a motion to record a court hearing. Uh, so I, I've gotten the same question that uh, a couple of the members, at least uh, Representative Packard and Weber have about <coughs> who is a member of the press corps and what is this registration. Uh, further, I would say that HB 110 arguably violates part one, article 22 of the New Hampshire Constitution that guarantees freedom of the press. So I would urge the committee and the full house to ICL this bill. Good. Questions from members of the committee? 
seeing none. Um, I do have a question. It is, I see two members of the press here that are familiar faces. Um, would either of you uh, be willing to answer a question for us? Um, I think it probably depends what the question is. The question, the question is, for, uh, from members of the committee, the question is, is there a formal registration currently for members of the press where you have to come in and register um, with the clerk's office or the speaker's office or any office um, whatsoever? <coughs> When we cover um, session days, we must sign in with the, um, when we come into the House chamber, we have to sign in and we usually get a badge. Right. And on Senate session days, we also sign in. Okay. But in the press room, um, we have designated desks. Okay. Yeah, and I've not had to, I mean, ever since I've been here, it's just the, that's the space for the constant monitor, the AP, and we've not had to like re-register every year or anything. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Would you be willing to answer another question if it comes from the committee for clarification? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there another question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Would um, uh, you be opposed to wearing a name badge while you're in and around the state house covering state activities? Um, I think so. We have like. Uh, Credentials, I think, but I, I don't. I'm not really comfortable answering that question. I'm not discuss this with my company and whether or not we have a position on whether or not we can take a position on this bill. So, okay, um, we'd have to. I'd have to discuss that with my boss before. That's a that's a few answers. Fair. Representative, just, just follow up to that. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you mentioned that you do have press credentials, and one of the one of the test pieces of testimony was that uh, a. Uh, member of the press would not give a name or who they work for to a member of the general court. Would, would, would that would a question to you if you were an, interviewing a uh, member of the court? Would you be required, or would you feel comfortable giving your name and who you work for? I always do it's that. It's standard operating procedure for us to give our name and affiliation. It's not like it's not really ethical to not. I mean, for us, at least the organization I work for, it's not ethical to pretend to be someone else or refuse to say who we are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good. Okay. Did I just see the clerk out in the hallway? Yes. Um, I was going to. John, would you ask him if he knew what this is? Members of the press, before they're allowed into the House sessions, mm -hmm. must sign in, get that sign, and there are specific areas in Repstown that they have to remain in. That helps. It does. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, would you uh, be able to help us out with a question? To your knowledge, is there or has there ever been any type of formal sign in or, or or registration of members of the press with the clerk's office or any other office that you're aware of? Uh, prior to uh, the House Information Officer um, doing his press credential in this, uh, this past session, uh, it had been done by the Sergeant at Arms and it was just a sign-in sheet um, and an even cheaper sticker than we use now. And That's only for session days? That is correct. Okay, and could I put you on the spot, Mr. Rivers? And, and yes. is that is that currently? That is only for house sessions. Yes. Uh, those that work in the house on a regular basis, we know uh, it becomes a space issue, especially when there's a, a hot button issue and we have lots of press in there. Yeah. So we want to make sure that the, the mainstream press are allowed in. If someone comes in who's a blogger who is fancies himself as citizen legislature, we allow them to come in and, and they go on the balcony. But it becomes a, a, a space issue. But most of the people who cover the State House on a regular basis are well known. And they do identify themselves. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Jan Freeman. Ian Sorry. Freeman. Jan Freeman is. Ian's Ian. Oh, Ian. I Sorry, my apologies, that. please. Um, from Free Keen. So, yeah, I've done a lot of uh, camera work here and recorded a variety of different sessions. And personally, I have no problem identifying myself. Um, but it's you guys who are the so-called public servants. It's your names who need to be on the record. And if one of the state representatives has a problem with 
the way someone has tried to interview him, then he's under no obligation to answer any questions. You know, if a member of the press asks you a question, you certainly don't have to speak to them if they're being rude to you. Uh, but they also don't have an obligation to speak to you either. They don't have any obligation to identify themselves. It's a nice thing to do, uh, but it certainly shouldn't be a requirement. And I wouldn't want to see somebody put in handcuffs because they didn't want to give somebody their name. So I oppose uh, this particular piece of legislation. And I wouldn't be interested in wearing a name tag. I don't mind identifying myself when asked, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mem uh, questions from members of the committee? No? Nope. Seeing none? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, I have no other pink cards uh, regarding House Bill 110. Is there anyone else wishing to speak at this time? Going once, twice, okay. I'll declare this public hearing closed at uh, 9.30. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.